Hi parents, today I wanted to talk to you about sensory bins. Sensory bins are a great thing to use with your child for so many reasons. First of all, you probably have everything you need already around the house. It's cheap, it's quick to pull out, and your kids will love them. They can spend hours playing with different sensory bins. Secondly, it provides quite a few different educational opportunities and teaching moments with your kids that they won't even know are happening. It's a great play to learn activity. Let's start with what a sensory bin is and what you can use. A sensory bin can be whatever you want it to be, whatever you happen to have around the house. If you have tin foil baking dish, disposable baking dish, you can put shaving cream in here, water in here, sand, pebbles, flour, anything like that can go into there. If you don't have one of those, we all probably have different plastic containers. This one's just a clear Sterilite container. You can get Rubbermaid, whatever you have. It doesn't have to be clear, just some container that your child can play in. I've also used the um, hard plastic swimming pools. Those are great because then their whole body can get in there and they can really explore what they're in, what's inside of it. So that's one thing you probably have around your house already. Now you need something to put inside of it. Lots and lots and lots of things can go inside of a sensory bin and give your child hours of exploration. First and foremost, water. Water is a basic, but kids love water. You can put bubbles in there and then it can turn into a dowel bath, a car wash, all kinds of things. You can put rice in there if you have rice around the house. And rice can go either way. You can have it just plain white, brown rice, whatever you have around the house, or you can color it. This was colored for Easter time, so you can see the spring colors. You can color it for fall colors, whatever you like. That's a great thing. Pasta, another great cheap thing. Again, color this, um, and then when we're done using it in the sensory bin, you can take it and string it, pipe cleaner, string, yarn, whatever you have, make necklaces, great fine motor for the kids to be stringing neat noodles like that. So those are two things you might have around the house. And if you don't, they're pretty cheap to buy. A third thing, corn kernels. I also have some colored corn kernels here. Let me show you these. These are vibrant and beautiful. And it's just popcorn kernels. That's all you need to grab. And it's just a different texture than the rice, the noodles. So you can get all three of these and just throw them in there one at a time or all together and let your child explore that texture. Something else a lot of us have lying around, especially if you have children and they are collectors, you probably have some rocks and stones lying around. Now, obviously, if you're going to fill up a tub, you're going to need quite a few. So you can buy these also at the dollar store. You can buy fish rocks, anything like that. But again, great texture, great sounds for the kids. And with something like this, you can also turn it into a construction site. Put signs in there, put cars, put trucks. You can put it into, um, make it into a dinosaur dig. Put, I have um, found this lying around just from some project I did somewhere. I've got a bunch of these little greeneries. Put that in there like little trees. Dinosaurs can go in there. All kinds of different things can go in there. Something else that's fun to explore that you probably have at home, shaving cream. Kids love the texture of shaving cream. Then they're also engaging their sense of smell with this as well as their sense of sight. Getting in there, you can have them write letters in it. You can hide stuff in it, make an I spy game out of it. Um, let's see what else. Another thing you sure you have lying around, cotton balls. It's a, this is actually a great snow one in the wintertime if you want to fill up a sensory bin with cotton balls and pretend that it's snow if it's too cold to go outside and play. You can do a little indoor snow play. They could even put gloves on and pretend that they're outside, get little shovels, do fun little things like that. I do have a list and I will include the PDF for this in the Facebook post of different fillers and different accessories that you can use. So there's a much longer list than things I have to show you here of things that you can put inside. There are so many possibilities. The one thing I would say is if you have a younger one who still puts things in their mouth, definitely be aware of that. And with beans, I know you have to be very careful with dried beans and those getting swallowed. So if you have a younger one, beans might be something to stay away from. But if your child is beyond putting things in their mouth, beans are an excellent thing to fill a sensory bin with. They can look like so many different things. You can get different colored be beans, can look like dirt, can look like snow if you get white beans, all kinds of things. So now that you've got the filler in your tubs, now you need some stuff for them to play with. Around your house, I'm sure you have measuring cups. These are wonderful. It gets them scooping and pouring. And then you can take it a step further and say, hmm, this one looks smaller. How many of these do you think it's gonna take to fill up that one? Which one has more? Which one holds less? And as your child gets older and you want to take the concepts a little further, you can say, hmm, it took three of these to fill this one up. So this one is one third the size of this and get them started on fractions. 
So you can go that route too if you want to. Something else, funnels. Kids love to put it in and watch it pour out. I got mine at the dollar store and it came with about six different sizes. So that means that there's six different hole sizes in here. So as you're putting beans in, huh, that one didn't go through. It got clogged. Why is that? And then try it and will it work in this one? The conversations you can start and have with your children can take you a lot of different directions. And again, they're learning while they're playing. Now, another thing you might have lying around, turkey baster. This is great fine motor and this is great for the idea of pinching it putting it in the water and releasing it. So the water goes up and then taking it somewhere and pinching it to release it. That's a tough concept and a tough thing to do for kids. So it's a good practice for them. Let's see, you probably have cars and trucks laying around. Like I said, you can put them in the beans and the rocks and they can create their own construction site, their own racetrack, whatever you'd like. All these little things, if you have plastic animals, plastic or wooden people, all of these things can go in there and be fillers and extras. I also have, just, you know, measuring spoons, scooping again, pouring, comparing sizes. And then I had tweezers. If you don't have tweezers, these are actually really tough. I have tweezers or if you have tongs at home, anything like that, so they can pick it up and move something. They can pick up a cotton ball. And if they're getting really good with their fine motor, they can try to pick up a bean and move it. If you have an extra ice cube tray, again, cheap at the dollar store, you can use the tongs with this. You can see that I have numbers written inside. So let's put one bean into the number one spot. Let's pick up two and put it in the number two spot. Or you could go sorting with colors. Let's pick up all the red uh, corn kernels and put them on the top and all the blue ones and put them on the bottom. You can come up with whatever you, whatever you wanna do there with that. One more thing I wanna show you. If you have blocks, wooden blocks would probably work fine. I happen to have foam blocks and shaving cream. This is so fun for the kids. I've got just a craft stick. You take some shaving cream in your sensor bin smear it on and they can build. It's like brick and mortar. They can start creating. So that's another fun thing you can do with a shaving cream tub. Also, one more thing actually, great big sponges are good for their hands and then they get the squeezing. So they're building their fine motor skills again. Get them in the water. They can wring them out. They can wash things. Just another great tool to have on hand. So I've referenced a few times how it is a great play to learn activity. My suggestion would be if you have a child that doesn't really like the tactile things, he doesn't like, he or she doesn't like to touch things, get their hands wet, that's fine. You don't want to force them into it. So one thing you can do is get the sensory bin ready, have it in a location, centralized location, and then just leave it there and let them just kind of walk by. Maybe they'll get a little curious. Maybe at one point they'll stick their finger in. Maybe they'll just observe. And then if they see you playing in it or a brother or a sister or a friend, that might get their curiosity up even a little bit more. And they might come over and eventually just kind of, you know, give it a little touch. You don't need to force, but you can encourage. We've done this with children before too. Let's just see what it feels like to put a little bit on your finger. They don't even have to reach inside to say it's shaving cream. Let's just take a little and put it on your finger. Tell them what that feels like and let them just have that sensation. But have a towel ready to wipe it off if they can't handle it. Let them build themselves up to that. That is totally fine. Also, when you start a sensory bin with your child, let them have that moment to just kind of explore it on their own first. This would be a great time. If you have something to do, go do it. Go get your phone call made. Go get some dishes done. Go sit down and have a cup of coffee for a minute. Let them have that little bit of time on their own to explore and play before you come over and start having conversations with them about the things that are in there. And again, if you are homeschooling three of the children right now, one other child right now, Go do that and let them just have the time to explore. You don't have to have those conversations. They'll discover these things on their own. So I hope this gives you some ideas of what you can do with a sensory bin. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.